Hi everyone, Jeannie back here today to share a card using Gerda Steiner Design's new stamp set, Chicken Scratch. And I was inspired because Gerda actually wanted to share a sneak peek of it today and to somehow incorporate April Fools into the card. And with cards, I think that's a little bit hard, but I was up for the challenge and I came up with this card that features a double slider aspect. So for the images that I'm using, I'm using three of the little chickens and the pig. And the pig is the random critter that's in this set that doesn't really go with the chickens. And I think that that definitely helped to play a role in this April Fool's kind of card. And I hope you like it. For most of my cards, I don't plan ahead and I usually will film and wing it and see what happens. And I came across some issues creating this interactive card just because I needed the placement exactly right. And so I don't have exact measurements, but I think that it's something that you'll be able to recreate using the idea behind it. Um, I don't know how many situations would have a pig and a chicken coop, but I mean, I'm sure that it can translate to some of your stamp sets. So I stamped out these two chickens and a pig, and I realized that I needed to stamp out an additional chicken, and this one's extra funny because it is basically showing us its butt. And all the markers that I'm using are Copics, and I'll have every one of them listed down below. And so the idea behind the card is that I have a pig who's laid an egg and he's in a chicken coop and these two chickens are kind of looking at him like, what are you doing? You're a pig. You don't lay eggs. Get out of here. And the joke behind it is that, you know, just kidding. The pig didn't lay the egg. The other chicken did. And the double slider will play a role in swapping their places. So what I just did was I have an A2 card base and I trimmed down a panel um, to add to the front of the card. We'll be adding foam to the front panel to add the dimension so the double slider can be behind it. And I'm just messing around drawing uh, a little chicken coop, um, a city girl. So I have no idea if this is anywhere near accurate, but I have the idea that the two chickens and the pig are hanging out on the top level and um, they lay eggs and it falls to the bottom so people can collect them. And you can let me know if this is totally made up or this actually resembles a chicken coop. I really have no idea. Um, so I'm just drawing in what I think it looks like in pencil and I'm using a Copic friendly marker to um, line these. And I will also stamp the egg that the pig is supposedly laying directly onto the front panel. And this front panel, I'll go ahead and mask off and use Distress Ink to color it up. I just didn't want to use a Copic marker to ink up the entire space, only to go over it with a little bit of detail from the Copic markers. And if you've watched my videos before, I create a wood grain texture just by scribbling lines and adding a little bit of shading between the boards and it's really easy and I think it's pretty quick to do. I honestly have no rhyme or reason. I just go in and scribble. I make straight lines and it ends up looking fine because you know wood pieces aren't perfect. So once I finish adding a little bit of shading between the boards, I will go in and also add hay. And I've never colored hay before. And so I just use four colors of yellows, darker orange, and brown. And I literally go in and uh, draw curves. And that's what I do. And once I add the four different colors, it ends up looking pretty okay. I'll add a little uh, light blue to the background just so it stands out. Um, and I color in the egg, but the hay looks pretty good in my opinion. Um, also for the main card panel, I'm coloring the top portion that will be sticking out 
and showing behind the front panel and I do the same thing. I use those four colors, scribble in lines and curves and it ends up looking like hay. And it, you don't have to color the entire panel because it won't be showing since it will be covered by that front panel. So you just need to color enough uh, where you're satisfied. And this has come together quite well, I thought. I'll go ahead and use that same light blue to color the background. And I end up trimming this card panel because I'm going to have a pull tab. So I want it a little smaller than uh, five and a half inches uh, tall. So it will fit into a panel once I add that pull tab to it. So a part of a double slider is that you actually need a little mechanism um, behind this front image. And I use a piece of paper that's just a little bit smaller than the front panel. And I actually end up uh, picking a size that is a little too small. And the pig won't go completely down without um, him showing his pig ears on top. So I'll actually end up going back and picking out a larger piece to do this. But I think my favorite things has a, a die that does this where it creates little slots. So you can um, have a piece of acetate or, um, you know, plastic move up and down. But because I don't have that die and because I think it's a little different because I need it to conform with the pig and the rooster. I create my own slots just by using an X-Acto knife. I'll trim two half inch slots and I'll cut about 1 16th of an inch just so that there, there's a little room for the plastic to move. And I'll loop it through and tape it down. And so when the taped portion is on the back and that's where the pig will go. And the front portion will have the rooster and he will go up as the pig goes down. So again, the starting position is that the chicken will be taped on the front of the panel at the bottom of the acetate strip. And the pig will be taped down on the back at the top part of the acetate strip where we tape the acetate piece together. And this will move the pig as the chicken moves up. And to help this along, I created a little strip that I taped to the pig and the chicken because I realized that once it popped up, it didn't go over that first wooden panel. And we want it to pop up instead of stay behind because it looks more like he's laying the egg if he hovers above that top level. And so I just color in the strips by doing the same thing as I did for coloring the hay. And this just makes it look more cohesive generally because when it pops up, it's not just white. It actually matches the hay that's in the background. And so I just keep playing around with this. I do this again for the chicken. And uh, once I have that ready, I'll go ahead and adhere it to the chicken and the pig. And so as a afterthought, I realized that I actually need a strip for the card recipient to pull the pig down. And once I adhere everything, I kind of realize this. And I also play around and I realize that the pig doesn't go all the way down. And you'll see him with his little ears at the very top. It's very unnoticeable, but it bugs me enough where I had to go back, grab a larger panel so I could uh, create a longer slider. And this is where the measurements don't really work because it depends on what stamp set you're using, what type of card you're creating. And it's something that I just play around with when I create a card. And a lot of interactive cards, there's no set uh, measurements for them. You kind of just have to play around to see what stamp sets you're using so you don't have to go ahead and get this specific stamp set. I mean, it'd be great if you wanted this one because it's a really cute set, but it's not necessary. You can always look around your stash and work it into the card that you want to make. So here I'm going back and using a larger panel because I needed a longer acetate slider so the pig will move all the way down. I go ahead and do the same thing where I cut a half inch slot. I make it about a 16th of an inch wide just so the plastic will move nicely. And I'll 
loop in the acetate strip, add the pig to the back, and add the chicken to the front. And this uh, allows me to move it nicely, and it works out where the pig will be pulled, and he'll go all the way down behind the panel so you don't see him anymore. And it's a lot of just checking to see if it works, and if it doesn't, working with it. So for the strip for our card recipient to pull on, I just trimmed down a piece of craft cardstock. It's a half inch strip and I make it longer than I need it to be because at least I can cut it when I decide how long I want it to be uh, versus if I cut it too short, then I have to keep going back and fixing it. So I usually err on the side of caution. So for the double slider, we need to add foam to give it the dimension that it needs for the slider to move up and down. So for the front panel, I add one layer of foam and I'll put the double slider mechanism on top and then I'll add a second layer of foam. So it gives it enough space for the chicken to move. And if you want, you can add a third layer just to be sure. And I think Think that if I went back I would stamp the chicken and have the strip connected to him because I fussy cut this image and its little legs did get caught on going up and down so I would go back and make that change but it worked because I added enough dimension to it so it could move freely so I don't know about you, but sometimes I forget to stamp a sentiment down before I add it to a card panel. And it has dimensions, so it makes it really hard to stamp. And I did this here. As you can see, I stuck a post-it pad right underneath and stamped and hoped for the best. I really wanted to heat emboss this because of the wood grain. I didn't want to stamp it on a strip of paper and cover up all that coloring. For the little pull strip, I stamped a pull here, and I actually trim off here, so it's just pull. It's enough for the recipient to know to pull the tab. <laughs> and this card turned out well. I really liked it, and it cracks me up. It's just a little ode to April Fool's, and the stamp set actually releases in about a week. So it's just something that's a sneak peek for you to see what this is and how it could work and I hope you enjoy the video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.